In Paraguay, history continues to repeat itself. Despite a bitter campaign against the center-left coalition that at one point looked set to win, a conservative candidate is again going to be president. Santiago Peña heads the conservative party that's dominated politics for 70 out of 75 years. I'm 70 years old. I was born and grew up with Colorado Party, and they're going to have to put up with us for another five years. I think that Santiago Peña is capable, and I hope he corrects the defect vices that we have. The 44-year-old economist and former finance minister promises better days ahead for one of South America's least developed countries, in part because of rampant corruption. Democracy is my flag, but democracy with bread, because in abject poverty, it's neither democracy nor freedom. Thank you, my dear Colorado party. We will honor you until the last second of my administration. Santiago Peña is definitely the man of the hour, but so is the former president, Horacio Cartes, whom nobody had seen for days. He had been keeping very, very quiet, low profile, especially because the United States government has accused him and the former vice president of having links to international drug trafficking. Now he has come out of the shadows and is being embraced by the next president, Santiago Peña. Peña won with just under 43% of the votes, well ahead of his closest rival. Efraín Alegre lamented that he would have won had the opposition been more united. Despite its own bitter infighting, the Colorado party operates as a solid bloc. It controls the, the, uh, the whole state, state apparatus. Public officers are mostly uh, from the Colorado party, around 80 to 90 percent. And this is like a big, um, uh, big advantage that puts the field in a very asymmetric position for the oppositional parties. Perhaps that explains why Paraguayans are hoping for a better future, while again voting for the party of the past. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Asuncion, Paraguay.